about the author. Arnold Stein is the most popular author in America. He is the creator of the Goosebumps, Give Yourself Goosebumps, Fear Street, and Ghost of the Fear Street series. Among other popular books, he has written more than 100 scary novels for kids. Bob lives in New York City with his wife Jane, teenage son Matt, and dog Nadine. Today's story is The House of No Return. We were afraid to go too close to the house, so we stayed down at the street, staring up at it. Staring across the bare, sloping front yard, no grass would grow in that yard. The trees gnarled and bent, were all dead, not even weeds spouted in the dry, cracked dirt. At the top of the sloping yard, the house seemed to stare back at us. The two upstairs windows gaped like two unblinking black eyes. The house was wide and solid-looking. Built of bricks, many years ago the bricks had been painted white. But now the paint was faded and peeling. Spots of red brick showed through like blood stains. The window shutters were cracked. Several had fallen off. The beams of the front porch tilted dangerously. A strong wind could blow the porch over. No one lived there. The house had been empty for years and years. No one could live there. The house was haunted. Everyone in town said it was. Everyone knew the legend of the house. If you spent the night inside it, you would never come out. That's why we brought kids there. That's why we dared them to go inside. You couldn't join our danger club unless you stayed inside the house by yourself for an hour. Staring up at the house, bathed in the haze of pale moonlight, I shivered. I zipped my windbreaker up to my chin and crossed my arms over my chest. How long has he been in there? Robbie, Nathan asked me. Lori and I both raised our wrists to check our watches. Only ten minutes, I told Nathan. Fifty minutes to go, Lori said. Think he'll make it? Doug is pretty brave, I replied thoughtfully, watching the moon disappear behind a cloud. He might last another five minutes, I said, grinning. Lori and Nathan snickered. The three of us felt safe down here by the street. Poor Doug probably didn't feel too safe right now. He was shut inside the dark house, trying to stay there an hour so he could join our club. I turned and saw a light rolling silently over the street coming toward us. A white, ghostly light. My breath caught in my throat. It's a car, I realized, as it floated closer. The car with only one headlight, the first car we'd seen on this street all night. The beam from the headlight washed over my two friends and me, forcing us to shield our eyes. As it passed, we turned back to the house and heard a shrill scream. A wail of terror. Here he comes, Nathan cried. Sure enough, Doug burst out through the front door. He stumbled off the crumbling porch and came tearing across the dead bear yard. His hands waved wildly in front of him. His head was tilted back and his mouth was frozen open in one long high streak of throat. Doug, what did you see? I called. Did you really see a ghost? Sit, something touched my face, he wailed. He ran right past Nathan, Lori, and me, screaming his head off. Probably only a spider web, I murmured. Robbie, we've got to stop him, Lori cried. Doug, hey, Doug. We called his name and chased after him, our sneakers slapping loudly on the pavement. Waving his arms frantically and screaming, leaning into the wind, Doug kept running. We couldn't catch him. He'll run home, I said breathlessly. I stopped and leaned over, pressing my hands against my knees, trying to catch my breath. Up ahead, we could still hear poor Doug's frightened wail. Guess he doesn't join the club, I said, still breathing hard. What do we do now, Nathan asked, glancing back at the house. I guess we find another victim, I replied. Chris Wakely seemed like a perfect victim. His family had moved to town last summer, and Chris started in my sixth grade class in September. Chris had pale blue eyes and very short white blonde hair. He was kind of shy, but he seemed like a really nice guy. One day after school, I saw Chris walking home, and I hurried to catch up with him. It was a windy October day all around us. Red and yellow leaves were falling from the trees. It looked like it was raining leaves. I said hi to Chris and started telling him about their club. I asked if he'd like to join. It's only for brave people, I explained. In order to join, you have to spend an hour at night inside the house on Willow Hill. Chris stopped walking and turned to me. Squinting at me with those pale blue eyes. Isn't that house supposed to be haunted, he asked. I laughed. You don't believe in ghosts, do you? He didn't smile. His expression turned serious. The light seemed to fade in his eyes. I'm not very brave, he said softly. We started the walk again. Our sneakers crunched on the leaves strewn over the sidewalk. We'd really like you to join the club, I told him. You're brave enough to spend one hour in an empty house, aren't you? He shrugged and lowered his eyes. I, I don't think so, he stammered. I've always been afraid of monsters and things, he admitted. I believe there was a monster living under my bed until I was eight. I laughed, but his expression remained solemn. He wasn't kidding. When I go to a scary movie, Chris continued, I have to duck under the seat when the scary parts come on. 
Lori and Nathan came running to up to us. Are you going to do it, Nathan asked Chris? Or are you going to join a club? Chris shoved his hands deep into his jean pockets. Did you guys spend an hour in the house, he asked. I shook my head. We don't have to, I told him. We started the club, so we don't have to go in the house. We already know we like danger. New members have to prove themselves. Chris showed thoughtfully at his lower lip. We turned the corner and kept walking. The house was up the hill. At the end of the block, we stopped in front of it and stared across the bare front yard. See, it doesn't look scary at all in the daytime, I said. Chris swallowed hard. Needs a paint job, he muttered. And how come all the trees died? No one to take care of them, Nathan said. How about it, Chris, I urged. We really need new members. Yeah, Lori agreed. A club isn't much fun without only three kids in it. Chris had his eyes on the house. He kept his hands jammed into his jeans pockets. I thought I saw him shiver, but it might have been the wind rustling his jacket. Will you come in with me? He asked. No way, I replied, shaking my head. We can't, Lori told him. The idea of the club is to show how brave you are. We won't come in, Nathan said, but we'll wait out front for you. Come on, Chris, I urged. Do it. It will be fun. It's almost Halloween. Get in the spirit. He swallowed a couple of times, staring up at the house, and he shook his head. I really don't want to, he murmured in a low voice, so low I could barely hear him. Guess I'm kind of a scaredy cat. I started to plead with him, but I could see he was really embarrassed, so I didn't say any more. Chris waved goodbye and hurried off toward his house. Lori, Nathan, and I watched him until he disappeared around the corner. Now what, Nathan asked. We held a club meeting at my house two nights later. It was a pretty boring meeting. None of us could think of another cool kid to join our club, and we couldn't think of anything fun to do. Halloween is Saturday, I moaned. We should be able to think of something scary to do. What are you going to drop up as? Lori asked Nathan. Freddy Krueger, Nathan replied. I already brought the metal fingernails. Weren't you Freddy Krueger last year, I asked him. So I like being Freddy Krueger, Nathan insisted. You and every other kid in school, Lori muttered. Lori planned the dress as a vampire, and I had my monster costume already. We need more club members, Lori said, sighing. You can't have a club with just three people. Chris would be perfect, I replied, if only he weren't such a scaredy cat. You know, Nathan started rubbing his chin thoughtfully. It would be a really good f or Chris to get over his fears. Huh, what do you mean, I asked. I mean, we could help Chris out, Nathan replied, smiling. We could help him be brave. I still didn't understand. Nathan, what are you saying? Smile grew wider. We could force him to go into the house. I called Chris later that night and invited him to go trick-or-treating with us. He said yes. He sounded grateful to have some kids to go around with. He had only been at our school two months, and he hadn't made any friends. The three of us met at my house on Halloween. Nathan clicked his long metal nails and kept cackling and grinning like Freddy Krueger. I was a very cool monster with eyeballs on springs popping from my purple head. Lori kept talking in a weird vampire voice. Where's Chris? Nathan asked, looking around. Is he meeting us here? Yeah, where is he? Lori demanded. We were all a little tense. We were playing a mean trick on Chris, but we knew he'd feel good about things by the end of the night. The doorbell rang, and we all ran to answer it. Chris stood in the porch light, his face an ugly green. He raised both hands to show them to us. They were covered in green, too. What are you supposed to be, a peapod, I joke? Chris looked hurt. No, I'm a corpse. Very scary, I said. I handed out trick-or-treat bags. Let's get going. I led the way down the driveway and up the street. We stopped at several houses and collected candy. It was a cool, windy night with a tiny sliver of a moon. Gusts of wind kept fluttering our costumes and making our trick-or-treat bags fly up. We were approaching the house on Willow Hill. I had a very... F I had a heavy feeling in my stomach. My hands suddenly felt ice cold. I hope Chris can stay in the house for a whole hour, I thought. He's such a nice guy. I'd really like him to be in the club. Such a nice guy, and we were about to do such a mean thing to him. But he'll quickly get over it, I told myself, and he'll be glad we made him test his bravery. The eerie house came into view. I saw Chris glance at it and quickly turn across the street. I didn't want to go near it, especially on Halloween night. But Nathan and I grabbed him by the arms. Chris cried out in surprise. Hey, let go. What are you guys doing? Chris struggled to pull free, but Nathan and I were much bigger than him and stronger. Lori led the way over the bare dirt yard up the sloping hill to the dark, silent house. Chris tried to swing both arms, tried desperately to break free, but Nathan and I dragged him onto the tilting porch up to the front door. No, please, Chris pleaded. Please don't do this. Don't. Turn to him. Even under the green makeup, I could see the terror on his face. The poor guy was totally freaked. Chris, you'll be okay, I said softly, soothingly. Go inside, it will be fun. We'll wait for you, I promise. You'll be proud of yourself, Lori told him, helping to push him up to the door, and then you'll be in our club. 
Lori started to push open the heavy door. Nathan and I moved to shove Chris inside, but to my surprise, he reached out and grabbed my arm. Come in with me, please, he begged. His eyes wide with fright. Please, I'm too scared. I'm just too scared. He held on tightly to my arm. Let's all go in together, okay? I glanced at Lori and Nathan. No way, I replied. You've got to prove your bravery, Chris. See you in an hour. He gave him a hard shove inside the house. Then we slammed the heavy door behind him. He seems so scared, Lori said, her voice muffled by the vampire fangs. He'll be okay, I said. Let's wait for him down by the street. We took our places at the bottom of the driveway and waited. And waited. We checked our watches after 10 minutes, after 20 minutes, after half an hour. Chris is doing great, I whispered, my eyes on the dark windows of the house. I didn't think he'd last two minutes. He's a lot braver than I thought, Nathan said from behind his Freddy Krueger mask. We huddled close together, staring up at the house as the wind shook the trees all around us. Heavy clouds rolled over the moon, covering us in darkness. We waited 10 minutes more, and then 10 minutes more. He's going to do it, I said, checking my watch again. He's going to stay in there for a whole hour. Let's really give him a big cheer when he comes out, Lori suggested. As the hour ended, we counted off the last 30 seconds out loud, one by one. Then we took a few steps up the driveway, eager to congratulate Chris and welcome him to the danger club. But the front door didn't open. The house remained dark and silent. Ten more minutes passed. I think he's showing off, I said. No one laughed. We kept our eyes raised to the house. Ten more minutes, then ten more. Where is he? I cried shrilly. Something is wrong, Lori said, taking the plastic vampire fangs out of her mouth. Something is wrong, Robbie. Chris should be out of there by now, Nathan agreed in a trembling voice. I felt a chill run down my back. All of my muscles were tightened, tightening in dread. I knew my friends were right. Something bad had happened inside that house. Something very bad. We have to go in there, Lori urged. We have to find Chris. We have to get him out. All three of us exchanged frightened glances. We didn't want to walk up that driveway. We didn't want to go inside that dark house, but we didn't have a choice. Maybe we should wait a few more minutes, I suggested, trying to stop my legs from shaking. Maybe he doesn't have a watch. Maybe he's... Come on, Robbie. Lori gave me a hard tug. Chris isn't coming out. We have to go get him. The wind swirled around us, fluttering our costumes as we made our way up to the front door. I started to open the door, but my hand was so sweaty, the nor not... The doorknob slid under my grasp. Finally, Nathan and I pushed open the heavy door. The rusty hinges creaked as we opened the door and peered into the solid blackness. Chris, I called. Chris, you can come out now. My voice sounded tiny and hollow. No reply. Chris, Chris, where are you? All three of us began calling him. The floor groaned and creaked beneath us as we took a few steps into the living room. The wind rattled the old window panes. Chris, can you hear us? Chris, no reply. A loud crash made all three of us cry out. The front door had slammed behind us. Just the wind guys I choked out. It was much darker with the door closed, but it didn't stay dark for long. Pale light flickered at the top of the stairs. It looked at first like dozens of fireflies clustered together. I gasped as the light flared brighter and floated down the stairs like a shimmering cloud. Let's get out, I cried. Too late. The shimmering cloud spread around us and inside it saw two frightening figures. A ghostly man and woman, hazy and transparent except for their red glowing eyes. Their terrifying eyes sparkled like fiery coals as they circled us, floating silently. I can see right through both of them. I realize this house really is haunted. Well, where's Chris? I managed to blurt out. The man's voice was a dry whisper, the sound of wind through dead leaves. Your friend, he went out the back door. The ghost replied, about an hour ago. We didn't want to let him go, the woman whispered her red eyes glowing brighter, but he made a bargain with us. She snickered, a dry dead laugh. He promised that if we let him go, three kids would come in to take his place. And here you are, said the ghostly man, flashing an ugly toothless smile. Here you are. Don't look so frightened, kids, the woman rasped, floating closer. You might as well make yourselves at home. You're all going to be here forever.